All right, guys, today we're gonna do a quick demo. We're gonna touch on every step of the process uh, to coat a tub with the Ecapel 2K. This is the updated method for December of 2019 with our new kit, the foam roller, the scooper, and we're gonna redo this tub here. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna be redoing this tub here in our office. Obviously, it's not plumbed in since it's in the office, but um, you would wanna scrub everything down well with the Lysol Power Toilet Cleaner as step one. Uh, this has uh, nearly 10% hydrochloric acid in it. Basically, what that's gonna do is eat any soap scum, um, mold, mildew, uh, dirt, grime, anything like that. It's gonna clean it right off of the tub and leave a great uh, clean surface for the Acapel to stick to. In this video, I hope to answer a lot of your questions about random little things, as well as show you the new uh, updated install kit. I'm not gonna tape the tub, but normally what you would do, you would scrub everything down, then you would run a piece of two inch tape around all the edges, around the four walls, and then you'd wanna put a couple of pieces of tape on the floor, and then a couple of pieces of paper. Instead of putting them on the floor, it's best to put it a tiny bit onto the tub, uh, like a like an eighth of an inch up, quarter of an inch up. This is going to make it so no material gets underneath the tape onto the floor. Um, I'm going to not tape this uh, piece of cardboard here. At the end of the process, um, I'm going uh, I'm going to let it get hard and dry there, as if you made a mistake and didn't remove the tape at the end. And then I'm gonna show you how to clean that up if, uh, if that happens, which is a pretty simple process. All right, so I'm going to open the can up now and mix everything. One last note, I purposely wore a uh, polo shirt that is, has no material on it and pants that have no material on them. So just, uh, just so you guys can see how neat this method is versus some of the other ones that we used to use. So, uh, let's off. get to it. Um, I have had a customers ask how to open it. It's not sealed down by anything. It's just sometimes with the hot and cold pressure, the, um, the gas is expanding and contract and, uh, and that'll vacuum seal it shut. So you really just need to put a little bit of extra effort in it and, uh, and pull it off. Sometimes it can be kind of difficult. What you can do is punch a hole in the top and, uh, and that'll release the pressure and, and let you open it right. All right, so we got it opened up here and it looks like a little bit of the material has separated from uh, from this. This is a return can, so it probably went from hot to cold and hot to cold. Uh, Ecapel will not freeze, but sometimes some of the bonding agents separate. So you wanna stir this up before you pour the Part B into it just to, uh, to get it all uh, nice and even again. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna switch to the other camera and we're gonna do this really fast. Basically, as a quick synopsis, you wanna pour the part B into the part A and then you're gonna thoroughly mix it for 10 full minutes. You're gonna let it rest for 10 minutes and then you need to give it another quick one to two minute stir. And from there, um, from there you can go ahead and, and apply it. So 10 minutes stir. And you wanna make sure you be very thorough with this. Scraping all the edges, digging everything in. Um, some people like to mix it up and then pour it into another can. I find that kind of wasteful and you know we promote this as an eco-friendly alternative for a backdoor finishing so making more waste and litter is uh, not usually the best way to do it but as long as you go around the edges and scoop all the material off, stir it up well, scrape it off with the paint stick, stir it, you'll be fine. So 
So it's going to be very thin on the top, very thick on the bottom for a while until you get a little deeper into the process. But this is one of the most important parts of the entire thing. If you don't do this right, you're going to have spots that are wet, um, spots that are uh, spots that stay soft forever because this is an epoxy based product and if it doesn't get a chemical hardener added to it then it will never dry. So we want to attack this at all angles for the full 10 minutes. Um, customers ask all the time about drill mixers and also don't listen when I tell them specifically not to use them. We had a pro or finisher call in uh, two days after he did his training where we told him not to use a drill mixer. And he asked what was going on, sent us some videos and some pictures of a tub that he was trying to do. And the tub was all uh, bubbly and, and had like orange peel marks and fish eyes on it. And I asked him, you know, what he did differently and he said nothing. So then I asked a few more probing questions and he let me know that he mixed it with a drill mixer and he uh, washed the tub down with a uh, with xylene, which is a slow dry solvent, which if you pour it right after that, sometimes it will still be wet and cause fish eyes. So basically, Drill mixer, bad choice. Um, even when we tell people that, they still seem to say, well, it's not gonna happen to me. It's going to happen to you. You will ruin your product and your tub if you do it with a drill mixer. This is a hard pain to, it's, it's a pain to mix this, but if you want this tub to come out right, this is how to do it. Um, yeah, you know, these are kind of expensive kits. So if you have to go back and fix patchy areas with another $40 touch-up kit and wait another 24 to 48 hours for your tub to cure to be able to use it, it's just such a waste of time and money when you could just follow the instructions and do it right the first time. So I'm trying my best to make this point stick. That's why I'm being a little bit more aggressive with it right now. Um, we've had customers call in that ask questions, you know, why did this happen? Why did this happen? And then um, you know, a straightforward answer is because you didn't follow the directions. That's why. Um, you know, you asked me to talk through these whole videos. So if you listen to what I have to say, you'll, make, you'll end up with a perfectly brand new tub that looks great, uh, especially in this video where I'm gonna spend the entire time talking about what's going on, uh, what could go wrong, and all these processes. So just listen in, you know, you can take notes as well, that would help you, um, you know, write down bullet points for pause points. Maybe you can scroll back into it uh, later on in the process if, uh, if you feel like you need help with something but you know we just try to help the best that we can and you can also I'm, I'm gonna touch on most of these things as quick as I can in um, in the quick video that's gonna be before this the um, you know that one's gonna have the main points of the process and this is really just showing you that we're not editing anything out in the short. So just trying to help. That's all we care about is that you have a good experience with the product and your tub lasts a really long time so that you tell your friends about it. Four more minutes of mixing here. We get to when we finish mixing it we're gonna set it aside we're gonna wipe everything down I'm probably gonna time-lapse that real quick because 
it's just going to be 10 minutes of sitting around uh, because I'm not going to be taping it. Normally what I would do in a professional application is I would mix up the material basically as soon as I get there. Um, then I would wash out the tub, dry it, tape it up, and by that point your 10 minutes is up and give it a quick stir and then we just go ahead and pour it uh, right away. So. I'm sorry to be so descriptive. This is this is literally going to be the most descriptive video that I've made to date. And I'm doing this just for those who like to be extra meticulous and make sure that they know every aspect of the application so that they can have the most confident install that they can. Again, we're peeling the material back from the walls. We're scraping it off the bottom, we're scraping it off of the mixing stick, and you should be able to see that this is flowing a lot better now. You want the material in the room to be between 70 and 75 degrees. Um, customers have also had issues with that. We say it on the insert, we say it in every single video, it says it right on the can, um, but from time to time people don't want to listen to that and then they'll call in asking why um, they're getting sags in the center or um, why it stayed wet so long and then I ask them the first thing I usually ask is well what temperature was the application then I ask about the drill mixer um, those are the two biggest points of failure because like I said, people don't want to read the instructions, they don't want to listen to me talk about it, um, or they think that I'm going overkill. I'm doing the bare minimum to get the best proper job. Um, that That's kind of my whole MO on this, is that I want you to have the easiest experience and get the best quality finish, so that you write us a great review, and so that um, you recommend us to your friends. Short of that, there's not there's not really anything else to gain out of this. I could just tell you, you know, give it a quick stir and pour it on, but that's going to turn into a two minute, uh, I'm sorry, a two star review that says it looked great for a month, but then it was all patchy because it never dried. So the minimum recommended time is what I'm trying to accomplish. I'm trying to set you up with the lowest priced um, application tools you know we went out of our way to add the roller and the uh, and the scooper we didn't have to do that it's a lot cheaper for us to uh, to include just a regular paint spreader and a um, and the comb but the comb and the spreader are extremely messy um, and and in my opinion, it's the hardest way that you can do this. So, um, you see the foam roller, maybe you say, um, oh yeah, this is just a simple roll on coating. This is much different than that, and you don't wanna be rolling this on the whole whole piece. You'll see it when once you mix it like this, but this stuff is thick. It's like marshmallow fluff. It doesn't roll well. All you're doing with the roller is just moving it around. All right, there's the 10 minutes. I'm gonna set another 10, 10 minute timer for this to um, set up and get ready to go. I'm just gonna move it out of the way. I'm gonna move the, the roller, the scooper and everything. I'm just gonna wipe out the tub and then I'm gonna time lapse the, uh, the 10 minutes. So the whole point of this uh, video is to show off the new tools, which I'll show you right after I wipe this down. I just want to be fully prepared so that I can just jump on it and go right when the time ticks.
we got that done. Now we gotta tape the drain. This one I'm going to show you a slightly different method for the drain. I'm just going to spray paint this area real quick just so you can see what happens. pour the coating but I'm going to show you a different method of protecting the drain So normally what I would do in this circumstance, there would be a drain installed in here. This is too low to the ground to do that. But um, by showing you the black spray paint, I'm gonna show you how to prevent anything from getting underneath it. Um, basically what we're gonna do is make a little dam out of a Solo cup. pretty standard drain size and basically what we're going to do is cover the drain area with a solo cup it pulls the material it keeps the material away from the drain by about an inch on well, not quite an inch but by like basically a quarter of an inch all the way around it um you have two options when it comes to that but i'll show you that as we go along Another thing that I would normally do with this new uh, layout and uh, material. So you set up your roller, uh, that's pretty simple. For the scoop, I like to go a little overkill with this. I like to take a piece of duct tape or the tape that we use to tape the drain and tape around the tub, the two inch tape. I put a piece on this front lip. this and I just put this just to give it a little bit of extra strength and durability I usually wrap it up nice like this do one more on this side it's best to do it from the outside going in because that's the way that the material is going to go nice and smooth so I put one piece there and because these are glued on the sides I put one piece around the whole thing like this and let's just make sure that you know 
halfway through the process, you're not going to have any, uh, you know, have the, the box fall apart or anything. Versus the other scoopers though, these things work so good. Basically you can scoop everything into the box and then just pour the box instead of scooping it a hundred times. Uh, last thing I, I do is seal the, um, the holes in the box. Uh, so that you can just basically fill it up. So, there you have it. And that's how I prep the fry box uh, scooper. So, when you're sliding it around, you'll be able to scoop all that extra material in, pour it right back in the can. Um, Alright. We've got two minutes left until the pour. I'm gonna put this in here and just let it sit and rest. So with the cup, you basically just wanna put that right over this area here. When you get a, uh, so you should still tape the drain underneath it, um, but this will be good to prevent having to scoop the tape a million times after the process. Um, I'll show this a little bit more in depth towards the end. But basically what you can do before you even start, you can just dip this in the cup just a tiny bit. That'll get a little bit of residue on the edge. And then just stick the cup right over your tape line. And basically you can just work it right in. That's just going to glue it down basically. And um, it'll just make things so much easier for you in the end. All right. So we got a minute left. I'm still clean. I'll show you at the end. But we have one minute left in the setup and we will go from there. gloves on we have about an hour to work with this material uh, from from start to finish you have about an hour to work with it uh, after that it starts to get more and more difficult to level it out because the level evaporates first so on my application I'm typically done with the entire thing in about 15 minutes Sometimes 20, but we're gonna give it a one minute quick stir here just to get all the stuff that broke apart mixed back in. And then I'm gonna bend the can and I'm gonna pour the entire can on these three walls. That's gonna flood the bottom. Then I'm gonna take the scooper, I'm gonna scoop it all up, pour it back in the cut and the can. Then I'm gonna pour this inside wall. I'm gonna scoop it all back up into the can. I'm gonna pour the outside, um, and then from there, I'm gonna take care of the bottom quick, and that'll be it. So, you don't wanna go overkill and do a million different touch-ups and coats and stuff like that on this piece. You wanna be quick with it. Um, you wanna be very fast and let it do its work. If you keep, you know, I say that you have an hour to work with this, but, it's it's an hour to work with like you can you can work on the bottom for like an hour to an hour and a half but if you overwork the material it's not going to level out so if you have an hour and you go back and try to touch up the wall you're restarting what you already finished five minutes into the process and the material is not going to level out if you go and touch the wall after an hour so you want to finish all the walls quickly, and then you want to carefully not mess them up. So, yikes. All right. So, I bend the can in half. Try not to make a huge mess. Uh, 
the less material you get on your hands, the better off you are. So here we go. Mix the material. Now, I personally step a foot in the tub. I wipe that spot in a minute, but I pour the entire can like so. tape line you want to pour any extra into any areas that you didn't get a lot of material and then just set the can down just wipe this little bit of dirt off of there this is actually um, sticky because I spilled a little bit of the resin around there but that's fine so from there we're going to take our foam roller make sure that it's spinning properly we're going to put a medium pressure on the edge um, and this is going to pull so we're going to pull the extra material right down the edge with that all right so as you can see it's smooth because we poured it very fast and full. What you do now, you take the foam roller with a medium pressure. See that wave that's built up there? It pushes all that extra material down. So you wanna angle it into the corner and pull the extra out. See that? Pulls that entire wave of extra material out of there. You wanna just do that once or twice real quick. A medium pressure is all you need but it just moves all this extra material down the wall um, so that you don't have this happen later in the process. So the next thing we're gonna do, that's very important. If you forget to do that, you can get drips like this at the end of the process that you can't fix. So from here, we're gonna take the scooper and we're gonna move all this extra material down to the back and scoop it back into the cup. This is a lot faster and easier than it was with the um, with the old layout that we had. So this will help a little bit. You want to scoop up as much as you can. Uh, you can also use the foam roller to make it a little easier on yourself. You can take this and push with heavy pressure. You want to take all this excess here. from the edges. You want to push this whole wave all the way to the back. Heavy pressure is going to be your best friend uh, early in the process like this, moving it around. Because now it's going to be real thick back here and you'll be able to fill up the whole cup and clean it out in a couple seconds instead of scooping it a hundred times. Dragging it around the whole whole tub over and over again. So up your scoop, pour it back in the can. And keep scooping and scooping until you get the cup until you get enough material in the in the kit, which is about half of what you started with, to pour the outside walls. Another thing you can do to make it faster on yourself is you can line up the cup and then push it right in with the roller. That'll get you a nice fast uh, fill up as well.
we're just trying to get enough to finish the process and we don't want to leave a bunch of excess sitting in the tub because it will take longer to dry and it will make a mess so if you come up the walls a little bit it's not a big deal in this portion of the process because you can just literally move the material right back up there and it will fill right back in extra down here to scoop up we're just going to keep scooping and scooping until we're finished we're going to do this once now and we're going to do it once a little later in the process to get the remaining excess out of there there's pretty much enough material in the kit now to um, finish what we need to finish on the remaining sides so I'm not too worried about that right now. Now I'm just pulling some of this other extra out of there. Oops, move the dam a little bit there. So you're always going to get material that goes under the dam. That's why I recommend taping underneath it. It will save your time later if you put the dam as well. You can do it that way or you can follow it like it is on our written instructions and do it that way so which is to make like a tape wall all right so remove the scoop place that aside put the roller aside and now i'm going to pour this whole front edge you just pour a heavy stream right down the middle come back and touch up any areas that you missed here I'll show you this on the other camera to see the outside as well. All right, so now we've got it pretty much done. We're gonna put the can aside and I'm gonna take the other camera here for you. Basically, this is what the outside looks like after I poured it. So the inside as well is already almost all the way to the bottom. So I'm going to finish fixing the inside walls with these extra big waves down here and pull it right up the wall. I'm just going to go around and pull all this excess, all the excess right back up. And we're just going to coat the whole uh, remaining portion of the wall with this. So if you push very hard, you'll get a blob that will just come right up and that will run right back down as long as you do this early in the process. So I'm going to move this one here. And I'm just filling in these drip lines just so they have more time to level out. Now that's all finished. If you really wanted to, you can give the front a little more time to work its way down and just fill in all the voids on this piece here but the foam roll is faster and easier on this than our previous methods so we're gonna go back and level this out several times but for now that's all we're trying to do is just move the material around same thing is going to be set out here we're just going to push with pressure we're just trying to move this material so that everything gets covered so you can go side to side. You can pull it from bottom to top. Whatever you do, all you're trying to do is move material and get the entire surface coated. You're not really rolling it as much as you're pushing it around. So it will level itself back out in the end. But we have to be very patient with this and make sure we get everything covered. Uh, the cardboard's not making things easy for me here. I should have put a new piece first, but anyways, all right. So I've got a couple little pieces of dirt in the finish or something here. Just gonna stick my finger on there 
get that out of there quick there we go all right so now we're going to put one quick very light you just run your finger your roller on there no pressure at all just to steer everything in the same direction a piece of something stuck in there there everything in the same direction and then that's it we won't touch the outside again it looks terrible right now but this will all level itself right out if you do the dam the best way to do it is to put it on there basically now I just wanted to show you how you could do it early as an added precaution but I personally think if you put it on there now you're better off. Um, all right, so the last thing that we gotta do here for a little bit is we're gonna pull all this extra material again. Look at how much comes up, see this? We're gonna pull this all to the back. I'm gonna go right up into the corner here, right up in there. We're using a heavy pressure right now, okay? We're moving all this extra material heavy pressure and we're gonna scoop all of this material out back here we're going to take our scoop again and we're going to scoop the excess oops dropped it scoop up all this excess here basically bring this back down all the way and in some cases you may need to do this twice this is going to equal about a cup to a cup and a half of material when it's all said and done that you don't need for the uh, for the finished product so just keep scooping it all up if you don't do this you'll end up with ridges in the side of the tub and or um, it will take a very long time to dry so, pulling this extra out is in your best interest and taping the taping the kit is going to be the easiest way to keep it sturdy while you're here Give it one more pass. And then, yeah. All right. All right, so from here. What we want to do from here, what we want to do is take the foam roller and we're going to drag all the extra material that's left into uh, in about six inches in each direction. Come up the wall a tiny bit. Pull all of this extra material into the middle. Just let it pull up there. So we're gonna pull it all about six inches. Right up the wall a tiny bit, right in. 
you'll be able to see like a puddle in the middle of the tub. Around the drain you want to come a little bit further away. Pull it in a little bit more than that. So we want the drain to be as light as possible to prevent the excess buildup. Oops. We got this there just do one quick pass over the middle just to not leave a huge ridge or a big pile of material anywhere so this is going to be quick i'm just going to take the gun turn it on hot and then just run it over the bottom it'll quickly pop any bubbles Eliminate any craters. And that's it. I'll hit the top edge one time real quick as well. Just to make sure there's no bubbles, and that's it. And you can see all those little bubbles are gone. You don't see any big ridges coming down the sides. If you end up getting uh, like pooling along the sides, you have to repeat that last step once more. Uh, you wanna try to do that within an hour. We've only been at this for 30 minutes, actually 20, probably about 25 minutes, including uh, including the, if you include the mix time. And, uh, and this is finished. So the only thing left to do is to leave the drain uh, sealed up like that. You wanna leave tape under there. You want to put the dam, and then after a couple of hours, what you need to do is uh, wipe everything off. Uh, uh, you know, scoop, take the take the cup off, and then wipe out anything that's underneath to uh, to prevent material from dripping into the drain. So you have about six hours where it's going to stay somewhat wet. If you keep the heat at seventy five. The material is going to stop moving relatively quickly so leaving this on there i'm going to leave it on there for two hours and then i'm going to pull it off and wipe the uh, wipe the edge but that's pretty much all there is to it same thing on the front edge here um what you can do here you can take the paint scoop uh the paint mixing stick and you can go along and just pull all this extra stuff out of there that's one option um, or, uh, or if you, you can do it with the scooper as well, the, the tip of the scooper, just pull it out. Um, but you wanna back that up onto your paper and then fold up the top layer and get rid of it. That gets rid of all of your excess. So there's nothing for you to track around the bathroom and um, that will lead you in the right direction. All right guys, so like I said, pretty straightforward process. We tried to make this as neat as possible for you going forward. I um, didn't get any any paint on myself. Um, I used two pairs of gloves um, and that was pretty much it. I didn't need to go crazy uh, protecting myself. As you can see, I kept everything close by. Most of this is from using the cardboard for other things. But you want to put a couple pieces of paper out and that'll help you out dramatically. So the new kits will be available on Amazon. They actually just arrived at the warehouse today. And um, there are, I believe there are still a few of the old kits kicking around in there. So if you get one of the ones that had a, uh, a comb or a spreader, uh, you'll probably, for the next week or two, they'll still be circulating. If you want to do it with the foam roller, you can either pick up a foam roller at the store or, uh, or you can call us and we'll send you one. Um, but going forward, this is the only way that we're going to sell them. I uh, appreciate all of your feedback. If you have any other questions that you want covered in a new video, just ask them below and I'll, I'll be happy to try to help you out. But 
you know, we've showed plenty of videos. That Capel is the most durable. Now it's nice, queen, uh, nice and clean application. And, um, you know, no smell, obviously. I haven't needed to wear a respirator this whole time. So if you, uh, if you appreciate our video, if you could hit the thumbs up button, that really helps us out. Subscribe to our channel and uh, hit the bell for future uh, video notifications. Uh, you can order Acapel on our website at refinishbathproducts.com. You can order it on Amazon. Uh, and our parent company also has it available, which is milestonebath.com. Appreciate you watching the video and you guys have a great day. Thank you.